Well, uh, Q OK goes. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. A song. Another typhoon rapidly strengthening off of the east coast of the Philippines. This is the, and it's amazing to say this, fourth one in just in about three weeks. And we have another typhoon behind this one, too. So there's plenty to talk about out here in the Western Pacific. The key thing right now, though, is that our current typhoon, Ophel, also known as Usagi, internationally is strengthening here. We can actually just clearly see that inner eye forming. But if we peer through those upper level cloud tops, you can see the eye wall developing a really tight one there in the last few frames. This also does have a big girth on it, meaning you have these rain bands stretching off towards the west. So yeah, places like uh, Kat and Duanas looking at increasing rainfall even across parts of the Bicol region. But the good news with this one, it is expected this not basically head due west. We're going to see kind of a northerly churn with it coming on shore into uh, Cagayan province. The bad news is that this area is being impacted hard. In fact, look at these videos of uh, drones over the Cagayan River. Um, just incredible amount of flooding taking place at this time out there. Water levels continue to rise. Homes have been uh, submerged in some spots, especially further uh, downstream. And you know what? There, there's more rain for sure here in the forecast, guys. No ways of getting around it. This is a look at the official track of uh, from Pagasa here on Ophol, also known as Usagi. Expect to make that landfall here as we go ahead into Thursday, probably around noontime, but those bands are definitely going to be out ahead of it uh, as a typhoon into uh, Cagayan province. Uh, with that, though, I mean, you're going to be looking at plenty of impacts. Actually, let's take a look at the forecast from the Japan Meteorological Agency. As it skirts overhead, basically getting in and out of there fairly quick before turning towards the north. And then you have Man Yi, uh, which um, this could be making landfall uh, further towards the south. JMA actually has significantly shifted their track south across the Bicol region, which they're still recovering from flooding from Christine. Ah, sorry I yelled that. It just blows my mind. And that one actually could be more of a direct impact on the NCR uh, and also still contributing to um, water levels in the Magat uh, River Basin, the Kagayan River Basin, which could add up to the flooding that we're seeing further towards the north. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's a back-to-back -back scenario, uh, especially with this first one kicking on through. I wouldn't be surprised if we could signal force three or four into northeastern Luzon. And then this is the ECMWF. You know, the, the guidance has not been specific exactly where this could come on shore. My thoughts are probably just around Cassie Guran. But, uh, you know, the JMA is saying further towards the south, closer to the Bicol region. In either scenario, the entire uh, portion of Luzon needs to be getting ready for the next storm, which hopefully you are. You're not getting that uh, that term we've coined in this last series of storms, and let's remember it. And I think it's very catchy is typhoon fatigue, guys. And um, I, I, I I point this out, and I want people to think about it. And because if you acknowledge that people are getting this um, this fatigue, which is one typhoon after another, five consecutive ones, you you kind of get to that point where you can be like, all right, so. I understand I'm getting this being worn down, but you know that each storm is different and you know not to get relaxed even if you've already been through a few because a lot of times people say they go through them. I have the same issue with hurricanes. People say you go through these hurricanes or typhoons and you don't really. You're like, for example, let's say this one's going to move on shore into Cagayan and somebody out of Baguio or... Uh, maybe down towards Angeles or even Manila says, yeah, I went through that. No, you you got the outer rain bands. The inner core of a Cat 1 or Cat 2, as a lot of people that watch these videos know, is a lot different than just a few kilometers outside of that inner core. That's where you actually have those winds over 120 kilometers per hour, which is significantly damaged. D uh, damaging. So, yeah, just make sure you get that information from official sources. Don't get the typhoon fatigue, guys. All right. Taking a look at our next storm, though, that, yeah, this one's going to move off towards the north with Ophel, move on shore into southern tai, uh, Taiwan, uh, and then maybe uh, skirt across um, the uh, southern Japanese islands, even over towards uh, Okinawa, 
uh, could be looking at some tropical storm conditions as we head into Friday and Saturday. And then we have our this storm, of course, coming on shore here in the Philippines with uh, Man Yi um, tracking across. Very well could be more of an impactor for Pangan Sinan, Angeles, Subic, Manila. Yeah, those uh, central areas. So there's also another look with the rainfall accumulations with our first storm, that being Ophel skirting towards the north. And then our next one on the heels of it skirting off down further, just a little bit further south of um, the Magad area. So, boy, ah, <laughs> can't get, can't catch a break. These have been relentless. And here's the forecast for Thursday. On and off showers across parts of Asias. Looking off towards Manila, though. Yeah, we got uh, still some scattered showers. And heavy rainfall even still possible into uh, northern areas of Luzon, of course, because we have a typhoon pushing overhead. I shouldn't say even possible. Like, it's not a possibility. Um, all right. So, hey, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, I do want to quickly mention that uh, the Guam, hey, you missed out on our storm. And one of the reasons why... Well, you're, you're not missed out. It's past you. But one of the reasons why we're seeing that further south track on Mun Yi is that originally we expected it to kind of be like this. And you can see the bulk of the convection is actually well south of Guam, which is going to give it more time in these warmer waters and allow it to strengthen a bit more before coming uh, basically in the same track. And if this is only taking place a few days after this, uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a full-blown meteorologist to be like, I bet the conditions here are conducive for tropical development. No surprise there that the uh, JMA now expecting this to make landfall further south and as a powerful uh, typhoon. But yeah, it's a lot going on here, guys. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Key thing right now. Northeastern Luzon needs to be ready for more rainfall. Damaging winds potentially, but a lot of rain here on our Thursday. Um, and then the rest of Luzon needs to be ready as we head into the weekend, especially the end of the weekend, for the potential of yet another landfalling typhoon. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Please, friends, stay safe out there. Bye. Do you hate doing your taxes? Do you struggle figuring out what the law is and money management overseas? I wish there was an easier way. Well, FrontRunnerFinancial.com is your choice if this falls into your category. They're an international-based group of American accountants. They're based in Manila, and they're qualified to give you the best information where you are for those international finances. I wish I had these guys when I lived in Tokyo. Each year, it was a struggle. Where I needed to put money, what I needed to do, frontrunnerfinancial.com. Be sure to check them out and let them know we sent them your way.